TikTok is still under fire as a senator says the app's CEO should be investigated by the Department of Justice. I'm Rosemarie Miller here with Alexandra Levin, a senior writer here at Forbes. Thank you so much for joining me, Alexandra. Thanks for having me, Rosemary. So could you just bring us up to speed on how we got to this point? Absolutely. So there has been a lot of discussion, especially over the last year, about how TikTok handles uh, the data of American users of the platform. So some of the biggest concerns that people have about Americans' data is that there are concerns that Americans' information could be used uh, to potentially manipulate American opinion on anything from the kinds of dances that we could be doing to elections. There's also a lot of concern that Americans' data could be gathered through the app to surveil people or to watch people. And in fact, uh, at some point late last year, there was actually a Forbes journalist, my colleague Emily Baker White, who uh, it, it was it was discovered that TikTok was actually using her location data to try to track where she was relative to other by dance and TikTok employees, people working at the company, so that the company could try to determine uh, who was leaking information from the company to, to Forbes. Um, and that resulted in the firing of those people. So the concern is really, like I said, that the platform could be used to manipulate opinion or that it could be used on a much broader scale to, to, to watch people or monitor, monitor them for any number of reasons, the way that it was done with my colleague. Now, that hasn't happened yet to our knowledge at scale, but that is sort of the uh, the backdrop that explains why there is so much concern, um, especially into this year, about what the company is doing with Americans' data. Um, how we got here, uh, or, or the, the most recent development, I think, is um, in March of 2023, the TikTok CEO, Sho Chu, testified before Congress for the first time. There were a lot of questions asked of him by lawmakers um, about, you know, everything from dangerous trends on the platform to, of course, how the company is handling data. And uh, since that time, we have come out with a number of investigations, including the one I'm here to talk about today, that have shed light on um, you know, more, more things that people perhaps may not have realized about how their data is moving and being handled by the company. Okay, so let's talk about this investigation. I did speak to Emily. That's really scary that they're tracking her location. But if I'm not mistaken, the CEO said that Americans' data was not in China, right? And now he's saying that the data is in China. Is that what's going on? So there's a big, there was a lot of discussion um, at the hearing recently in March about access of data and storage of data. Access means can employees here or can employees in China actually access the data? Meaning, can they look at it? Can they use it to do to perform any number of tasks? Could they, if they wanted to, take it and use it for something that perhaps is not part of their job? Those are all questions about access. Storage is where is the data physically, you know, physically being housed? And what the TikTok CEO has said repeatedly, and the company has said repeatedly, is that. Um, on the access question, that yes, because TikTok is a global company, and in order to enable it to operate globally, there need to be there, there needs to be access to employees all around the world, including in China, um, to, to be able to keep the company up and running. But with storage, the, the the line that the CEO had said multiple times at the hearing was that the data is actually stored on physical servers that are in the U.S. in Virginia and in Singapore. He repeatedly, uh, you know. He repeatedly stated this fact, which emphasized that it was stored outside of China on physical servers. What we found in our investigation, um, which you know was the culmination of many weeks of reporting and a lot of sourcing from different parts of the company and a trove of internal documents, uh, what we found was that uh, American data actually has been stored on physical servers in China. And specifically, it is the data of creators, some of the largest creators on the platform who are part of the TikTok Creator Fund. Uh, the TikTok Creator Fund is a program that many people who are creators on the platform, who, who are basically paid to post content on the platform and are part of its monetization program, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the name of the program that they are part of. So would this be considered perjury? The big question, of course, is has the CEO committed perjury in stating that data had been stored always outside of China when our investigation has found very clear 
um, and very extensive evidence that it has been American data has in fact been stored in China. Um, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, who is the top Republican on the Senate Intelligence Committee, has asked uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland to formally open a Justice Department investigation into those statements. Um, so it remains to be seen whether he did in fact perjure himself, but there are certainly, you know, not, now that Marco Rubio has, has drawn attention to this and asking the Justice Department to investigate, there are certainly an, a lot of people, um, a lot of people scrutinizing not only those statements that he made, but many others that were made at the hearing. And uh, it's something that we're definitely watching closely.